How are we doing today? We're going to go over the radial arm saw. And the radial arm saw is in the family of circular saws. It has a circular blade, similar to the table saw and similar to the chop saw, which we'll be going over uh, later on. The radial arm saw is one of the most versatile machines there are. Uh, but in here, we're going to use it for one uh, reason only, and that is for uh, cross cutting, uh, for mostly rough cutting, and for doing uh, joints, which I'll be going over. But at your house, if you have one of these, I'll go over some of the things that it can do, and also when you read about it. Uh, you can turn this into a sander, you can do ripping with it, you can do bevels, you can do miters, uh, but as I said, most of the things we're going to do is cross cutting. So what we have is we have the radial arm saw. This is the arm. So the blade comes out on the arm and then goes back. What we have is we have the blade is on here and there is an arbor. The blade sits on the arbor and just like the table saw. Now the blades are a little different and this is important. On the radial arm saw, and we're going to get a close-up of this in a minute, the blade sits on the arbor with the teeth down, pointing away from you. On the table saw, the teeth point up top at you. So it's very important that if you're putting a blade on, that you're putting it on uh, the correct way. So what we want to do is come over here and get a, a look at the guard, and we're going to take that off. When doing any adjustments uh, on any machine, changing the blade or removing the guards, you always want to make sure that you disconnect the power. You do not want a machine coming on when you're working on it. So what I am going to do is I am going to pull this out and there is a locking knob right back here. So what we're going to do is tighten it and lock it in place. So now it is stationary and I can work on it. Right down here is a wing nut. So what I am going to do is loosen the wing nut. Actually, I'm going to remove the wing nut. So what we have right here is this is the arbor. And this is the arbor nut. The arbor nut has to be tightened with a wrench, okay, and this is a big one here. Never tighten the arbor just with your fingers. It has to be tightened with the wrench. Now if we look down here, the teeth are pointing down and backwards because the blade is spinning in this direction and it's going to grab the wood, push it down and help pull it back. So what we are going to do is put the guard back in place. We never Work on a machine with the guard out of place. And tighten it in place. So these are also part of your guards, all right? And they, your hands should never be here. Your hands, I bring it out here. I have a little mark on it. Most of us are right-handed, so keep your other hand out here. I am a little... Um, uh, extra. I'd rather have it safe than sorry. So you notice they go up and down. If they're not going up and down and sticking, let me know. Then I need to adjust these. You should never force. Remember, we never force anything on any machine. So if it's getting stuck, all right, let me know. Sometimes what will happen is when you're pulling out this, all right, will get stuck or it, it vibrates and this goes in. That locks it so we can make adjustments. So sometimes that sticks. Don't force it. Just let me know. And a lot sometimes what it is is this gets caught behind it. So that's stopping it. That, okay, right there. Then it will go back. So all of a sudden if it gets stuck, it's usually this. Don't force it. Just turn the machine off. Wait for it to stop. And then come get me and we'll make an adjustment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some adjustments. but. Uh, before you make any adjustments on here, always make sure you disconnect the power. So I have pulled the, the blade out on the arm, and this is the yoke. What I can do is lift this pin up, and then I can 
loosen it so I can spin this and lock it in place. So now what I can do is ripping. And this is a big thing if you're doing this at home. This is the anti-kickback, all right? And you must have this in place. And this goes right in here, all right? And it's not in here because we never rip with this machine. We rip with the table saw. I am just showing this to you because if you have this at home, the other thing that's pretty neat, you can take this off, take the blade off, and then actually put on a sanding disc. So this can actually become a sander. I said this is a very versatile machine, but we only do mainly one thing with it, and that's cross-cutting. While I'm in this position, what we can do is look at the teeth that are on this. And this is the circular saw. And there's three types of blades. There's cross-cutting blades, there's ripping blades, and combination blades. Depending on what you're doing, we want to go back to, again, the wood. This is with the grain that's ripping. This is cross-cutting, all right? So there's a ripping blade, a cross-cut blade, and a combination blade. Most of the machines we have are combination blades, so they do both. So you never use a ripping blade for cross-cutting. You never use a cross-cutting blade for ripping but you can use a combination blade for ripping or cross-cutting. So I wanted to show you this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the pin. We are gonna go back in and that locks it in. But what I wanna do is I'm just gonna tighten this up because it's good to have all your adjustments tightened before using it. Another thing that you can do, and, and we'll do this once in a while, but what you can do is you can tilt this so I want to raise this up, and here we see up and an arrow, so I'm spinning it in this direction. And what that does is raise or lowers the blade. So if I needed to, what I could do is pull this pin out, and I could tilt this. So, and then what I would do is lock it in place. But I, we don't do this very often. We're going to bring this back, lock it in, and that's at zero. So actually we can cut, and then the other thing that we can do with this is we can go back here, we can loosen this up, all right, and then what we can do is, is turn this. So we can cut it miters. We can actually uh, tilt the arbor and do a compound cut, similar to what we did on the bandsaw or what we did on the table saw. But this machine, all right, Doing all of those, this just locks it back in place, all right, is mainly for cross-cutting. This is what we'll do 99% of the time. Otherwise, you would see a whole bunch of little cuts into the table. As I'm saying that, how does that occur? So when you're setting this up, what we want to do is pull it out, drop it down, and the easiest thing is lock this in place, and then I'm going to drop this down. So here's our wood. What you want to do is you're going to see this. So all we want to do is we're going to bring that down. All right, so what we have is the tooth is just into this channel. If you bring it all the way down and it's in contact with the wood, when you turn this on, it's going to run at you. Oh, wow, do not do that. Never bring it all the way down. That's the number one uh, accidents that occur on this, and I'll be showing you uh, that. I know a couple uh, of people who have cut their fingers off because it was down there and it took off on them. All right? So not touching the wood, just into it, and then what we can do is loosen it and let it go all the way back. So now it is set to cut all the way through. What we want to do is, again, Make sure you have clean area. Here we have, this is where it used to be. So we've moved this over. So you should have anti-skid material. We're gonna move that over. So today what I just brought is a mat. So I have something that I'm standing on and it's not, I won't slide. So we wanna have a clean area, no baggy clothes, no jewelry, long hair tied back, eye safety, ear protection. I am ready to go. Now, this machine and uh, the chop saw uh, have its own dust collection system right here. As I said, 
This is under construction. We've moved it around. So unfortunately, this we got to stretch it and attach back there, uh, so it's not on. But I do want to show you. All right. So if we follow this down, here's the 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 chop saw, which we'll be doing, and this is over here. So this is the dust collection system, and all we do is turn it on from over here. So we want to make sure, and, and we've moved this, so we have to adjust this still. When you are cutting with the radial arm saw, board on the table against the fence. Right? I don't know why, but I've had students where they put their fingers back here. The blade is spinning in this direction. It grabs the wood, pushes it down, and pushes it back, OK? We're not in high school, all right? So I don't expect any of you to have your fingers behind the wood. On the table, against the fence. The blade is spinning. It's going to grab the wood and push it back, all right? And then when we pull the blade forward, right there, it has cut the wood. You don't have to come all the way past it. So here's the wood. We're going to go and right there, the center of the bottom blade, that's as far as I need to go. If I go back and for whatever reason I slide the board back and it's cutting in the reverse direction, it will throw the wood at you. All right? And just like any machine, never talk to someone while using any machine. All right? If I am cutting, I go like this and I turn. I naturally, I'm moving, my shoulder's moving. I will move the wood. So never talk to somebody. All right? If that happens, this wood is going to uh, fly at you. We never cut in the reverse direction. So we're all set. I have my eye safety on. I have my ear protection. I have a wide stance. Before I turn it on, I'm going to plug it in. Like any machine, what I want to do, all right, is that's a natural position. I'm holding the wood, doing whatever. Get your hands away. What I like you to do, this is the handle right here. This is the handle. My hand's on the handle. My other hand is up here. I turn it on. If there's any scrap or any wood underneath it, it grabs it and runs. This machine, I'm going to pull forward, but I'm actually holding back. Depending on the thickness that you're cutting and if it's hardwood or softwood, it will run at you. All right? So what I have is I'm holding it. I turn it on. Now I can let go. I get in my stance. I have my head down. I am just going to bring it so I'm just touching my mark. Get your head out of the way. And now slowly pull it towards you. There it is. I'm cut all the way through. I now go back. You don't want to come past the wood, because that could move. I'm going to get it out of the way there. I don't want it to have a kickback on it. Turn it off. So mostly what we do on here is this is a small board. Here's a large board. All right? So the sequence, I'm bringing this large board over. I want to get a board that is 10 inches by 16 inches. What I would do is come over. My number was 16. I'm going to mark 17. Well, you need 16. Very good. True size and shape. I need it 16 by 10. I'm going to cut roughly an inch bigger. When you get better, you can take that down. But I want, right now, an inch to play with. So what I'm going to do is bring the board over. I've made all my adjustments. All right? I'm ballpark holding it. Turn it on. Line up. Now what I'm going to do is head out of the way. Slowly coming towards me again. It's trying to run at me. I'm holding it back slowly. There it is. I'm cut. I don't have to come any further than that. And then I bring it back. So what I am going to do is 
turn the machine off so I can talk to you. Now I have a rough board. We're going to take this board later on and I'm going to show you rough cut, join and edge, rip to width, square one end, cut to length. You need to remember that sequence. Then I have a board that's true size and shape. All right? So what I just did there was called rough cutting. Then I'll go get a true size and shape. After I have a true size and shape, then what I can do is start to make my joints. All right? This machine is good to make joints on. This one or the table saw. So we're going to come back and we're going to take this board and what we're going to do is I'm just going to come up with, okay, pencil is what I like. So I'm going to make a mark. Again, I'm just showing you so that's where it is. And what I am doing is I am going to have a piece of wood. Matter of fact, we're going to put this in there. So there's our joint. So there is. All right. And rule of thumb, if you remember before, I never want to come more than halfway. So I am just ballparking, ideally, to measure. So I'm going to take this, bring it over, pull it out. All right, now what I'm going to do is come down here. Now this is the tricky part on this. And each one of these machines are different. I personally like the one with the hand wheel down underneath versus the hand wheel up on top. So I am going to raise up. Now if we come up here, I can see up. So I'm spinning it in this direction. So what I want to do is bring it so at the bottom of the blade, I'm going to move that board. You can see I'm not quite there yet. And that looks pretty good. Then what I want to do is release this, go all the way back. When making uh, joints, when making any cuts, it's always good to do a practice. So I have a piece of wood that is uh, the same thickness and I uh, do uh, a, a practice joint. So here we go. I'm going to line it up, get out of the way, hands on the hand wheel, turn it on. Nice stance. I'm going to come up and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come close to the line and just touch it. Now I'm going to move over to where I want it. I'm going to leave the line. Oh, beautiful. Get your head out of there. And then back. Now, what I always like to do is leave the lines. I can always take more off. It's really hard to put it back. So what I want to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to see, did my piece fit in there? Oh, no. Because you can see I'm a little, uh, I, a little heavy on the line. So I'm going to come back, hand on it. Okay, so now we can see, I still have the line there, I'm a little bit here, but I'm going to test it. All right, oh, look at that, a nice joint. And then I would clean this out. So if I had a bigger board, all right, what I like to do is put it in there, does the board stand? So just happen to have a spare one here, and this is a hair bit bigger than this. So what I'm going to do, we're going to test this, so I'm going to make it just a little bit. All right. So I want that to stand in there. All right. And you don't want big gaps. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do a boo boo. All right, don't you do this. So now if I took my wood, does it stay in there? It falls out. That joint is too big. 
Rule of thumb, you can always take more, it's hard to put it back. All right? So we use this for cross cutting. I would never take a board and rip with that. Margin of safety, you want to have your uh, finger six inches out. All right? What you want to do is you are standing a nice uh, wide, don't put your feet together wide. You're looking down, get it adjusted, get your head out. This, the anti-kickback, is in there a lot of times, all right? We don't have it in there because we don't rip. So you have your head down, and remember, the blade's spinning this way, it's going to grab the wood. It wants to run at you. You're holding it back. If your head's down there, it's going to hit you right in the head. You don't want that. You can see where the blade's going. Your fingers are never here. Never hold your wood and turn it on. If there's a piece of scrap wood back there, it will run at you. If you bring this down and it's in contact with the table, it will run all the way out here. Real safe, hand on the hand, hand on the hand handle. Turn it on, let go, ready to cut. Look forward to seeing you in class.